Thank you, everybody, for being here early and uh, navigating through the traffic of Madrid with rain. Um, we're having a, uh, we're going to have a, a very interesting conversation here about um, the token economy, uh, very timely, considering what is happening in the world, uh, both in terms of how the crypto market uh, has been behaving in the last few months and uh, the most recent you know, regulatory challenges that are happening particularly in the U.S. So it's, it's very timely to have this conversation. Um, as mentioned before, we have Aide from Atani that is building uh, a unique solution, a, a broker that allows uh, users to have access to uh, basically every exchange, every protocol, CFI, DeFi, uh, making it easier for consumers and enterprises uh, to basically operate with uh, crypto assets. Jesus, uh, you know, being, a crypt being in crypto for many, many years, uh, not only with Crypto Plaza, but also now Roble Ventures, right? Yeah. Uh, being one of the most prolific investors and, and builders in the space, now with a, with a venture builder uh, helping, uh, you know, new founders, new entrepreneurs, uh, to build in the space. And then my good friend that is building Stabolut, right? So a new version of a stable coin, this one uh, tied to Bitcoin. Exactly. Uh, so we have a very different points of view in regards to the, to the token economy. Um, I'm gonna start by asking uh, our panel um, and say probably Jesus, if you can give us a little bit of uh, your view in terms of the primary benefits that this token economy offers to individuals, to enterprises, even to you know small and medium businesses, um, we're seeing this migration uh, that is taking more time than we all big believers in crypto thought, but we are in that path. So. Uh, talk, talk to the audience a little bit about those benefits and how you see those benefits and that value proposition of the token economy kind of evolving in the next few years. Okay, I think to, to begin with the, the basis, I think we, we have to, first of all, to understand what, there is, what is private property. I think that that's really, really important. Uh, we understand better that our society is really, really very dependent on private property. And that is what really incentivizes to do things, what, what really makes the economy really grow, and what's really uh, the important things. I think uh, when we talk about uh, tokens, we talk about digital private property. That, I, I think, is probably the main, really, uh, groundbreaking uh, innovation in our space. So when we talk about Web3, we talk about ownership economy. So we, we talk really about ownership, really. And, and that's really what I think is token about. When we really have a token, we have this digital property. And, and that's really, really amazing because if we see what uh, has uh, really habilitated that kind of technology, we, we can first think some, some data about that. First of all, we are really, uh, we are probably in a, one of the most important uh, uh, movements that has uh, bring capital to all over the world. So right now, uh, if you really see what are really the market cap of tokens, that is one trillion, uh, what is the uh, amount of people that own uh, tokens? Uh -huh. It would be like three, 300 million. It's not so far from what people uh, own stocks in markets. Yep. But we are probably see one of the most amazing uh, distribution of capital or, or worldwide. And it's not really the GDP. It's really, we have been really ownership of capital in a lot of uh, countries all over the world. So that I think is what's really habilitate. It's going to be habilitate a lot of activities, a lot of economy. And uh, that for me, it's amazing that there are a lot of uh, people that with so uh, small right now market cap is really uh, permitting people to uh, have digital ownership. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, and, and, and I think that's where, you know, really tokens create uh, a lot of disruption, right? When you can have this digital representation of money or physical assets 
and then people can start using you know, the, the pipes of the internet, the digital pipes, in order to transact. But that takes me to um, something that you know, everybody that makes an investment is always thinking about, that is volatility, right? And yeah, capital markets are volatile, and, and we have seen you know, stocks go up and down and bonds go up and down. But I think what happens in the crypto markets, in the token economy, is that volatility is, is wider, is bigger, right? And, and we see that, and, and everybody looks at how you know, cryptocurrencies and tokens oscillate, and, and that also prevents some people from jumping into the space. It's too volatile. So an echo, you're, you're trying to some way you know, uh, solve that problem or you know, bring a product to the market that addresses volatility. How, how do you see that plane going, going forward? So it's, it's interesting that, the, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, crypto is like, it feels like it's for speculators, for uh, rich people to, to, to be richer. At, at the end of the day, like crypto, Bitcoin, yeah, so it's a, it's a big deal regarding social welfare. Welfare, I mean, they are doing really good things for the humanity. It's like, so crypto can make people escape from their local currencies and they can... It's an alternative. It's an alternative. So they can escape from the... Uh, they can save the, the, their life savings. They can keep them uh, from... I mean, when, when they're in Venezuela, in Turkey, whatever. And the thing is that the um, Bitcoin has been the solution for that. Uh, so instead of uh, losing off all of your life savings, so you keep your money in Bitcoin instead of, of on your local currency. And what's happening today is that, uh, surprisingly, that the uh, stable coins are doing that. So people, inst instead of putting their money on Bitcoin because it's too volatile, so it's like they are, they are opening wallets and, and using USDC, USDT, whatever. And the, the stable coins are now this tool for people to, to escape the, these disastrous uh, monetary policies. And how stable are stable coins? That's a, that's a big question. Right? Don't talk about, you know, <laughs> Terra and all the things that we so, saw last year. So, so the thing is that uh, so a lot of things are happening. So we are, we are in, this, in this industry, which is amazing because every day things happen, you know. You, you go on vacation for, for a week and you don't read anything and it's like you, you, lo you I mean, you are totally lost. And in innovation every day. And so uh, with stable coins, uh, in, in the last months, different things happened. It's like uh, for the first time ever, it feels like the traditional banking, a, a problem in the traditional banking. It's affecting in, the crypto market, uh, right? Yeah, yeah af affected USDC. So that was something that no, nobody could, could imagine. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was really surprising. And uh, so that's why, at, at that point, USDC was not that, that, that stable. And in the, in the... You could buy a dollar for 92 cents. Yeah, that was, that was That's a very good trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only lasted for a weekend, but yeah. Very, very good trade, yes. So what, what do we have at stablecoins? It's like uh, no, everybody uses Tether, USDT, but nobody trusts it. Um, so BUSD was very good, but you know, uh, we have this problem. And may, maybe we can, we can address that later with the US government. Um, we have USDC, like it's too regulated, whatever. I mean, I mean so there is in a 130 billion uh, market cap market, so there is, there is room for, for new alternatives. Right. Good, but um, let's, let's talk about regulation, because you mentioned that and I think it's important. Um, this is still a very, um, let's call it underdeveloped industry in terms of regulation, right? I think regulators have not embraced completely and there is no real consensus around the world about how to create a regulatory framework for, for tokens and, and crypto. Um, I think the Europeans are getting ahead of, of, of the US and other markets uh, and, and this is going to probably enable this industry to grow faster. I did. Tell us a little bit about your view on that, on the regulation, because for you it's important, right? You're yeah. building a broker, and you want to be everywhere. There is no reason to have a broker for Spain only or for Europe only. So how do you see regulation today? How do you see regulation kind of a roadmap um, in the next few years? Yep. So I think regulation has changed a lot in, in the last years. 
So the crypto community, um, we've been trying to work with regulators for some time now. And um, I think a big success is uh, Mika, which is the new uh, regulatory framework uh, here in, in, in Europe. Um, and it's, it's quite like what they offer, crypto startups, company, everyone, is uh, just a clear framework of what companies can and cannot do. Something so simple as that uh, is, is not happening uh, worldwide, right? Um, so it's, I think it's amazing for crypto companies because now we know what we can do and what we cannot. Uh, but it's also very good for uh, individuals and to gain confidence in, in the market, right? Because uh, they have also established some minimum requirements that um, companies have to follow. So there is like, uh, let's say, um, there, I think there are going to be like less scams and less uh, dodgy companies that uh, we are quite used to in, in crypto. Uh, and this is good for crypto companies, but it's also good uh, for, for companies, right? Why? Because one of the biggest benefits that tokenize uh, the economy brings is that companies can access finance easily, right? Like if I need to finance my operations, uh, I can just go launch my own token uh, at minimum cost without having to ask for, for permission, and I can get out there right to the markets. If, if you compare this with traditional markets uh, where you have to go try going to the public markets, which is just for like really big companies, mm -hmm. or even private markets or bank accounts and stuff like that, that's not for everyone, right? So I think uh, regulation is core uh, to, to unlock uh, the, the tokenized ecosystem. Um, once again, I was uh, speaking about Europe, which uh, I think we've done a fantastic job. But then you have like the opposite side, which is uh, the United States, which uh, what's going out there is just crazy. The opposite direction, right? Opposite is like the regulator won't say uh, anything. So uh, they won't say if something is a security or it's not. It's like, okay, you've listed uh, whatever, right? Uh, Solana, now Solana is a security. Uh, two days ago, that wasn't. So what, what is happening, in my opinion, in, in the United States, this is going to kill crypto companies there. Uh, and actually, the biggest uh, successful companies, right, like Coinbase, Gemini, they are just uh, looking uh, forward to moving abroad, like Middle East and different uh, countries. Um, but the thing here is that you cannot kill crypto. You cannot kill innovation. Innovation will just move uh, from one place to another one. So uh, they will move to Europe. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us. They will move sure. to Middle East, Asia, like different places. Um, and I think that's uh, quite bad news for, for the United States. It is, it is, it is putting, putting the U.S. behind the rest of the world in the industry. Uh, along along the, the, the subject of, of regulation and, and considering that there is a framework that is coming, right? And we know that it takes time, right? But it's the it's first step and then you have adoption uh, across the different countries. Um, Jesus, do you think that the emergence of these frameworks and the adoption of these frameworks will, at certain point, um, make the big financial institutions jump into the token economy? Uh, are we gonna get to a point that I can have my BBVA, my Kaisha account, and then suddenly I don't only have euros, but I also have BTC and ETH and things like that, or are we, are we far from that? <coughs> I think the question is if this is really a competitive advantage. So that's the point. Uh, I, I was, uh, when I was the, the president of the Spanish FinTech Association, we were working a lot in the sandbox. Uh, I think when we would talk about regulation, we talk about taking some risk. So yes, if we are so conservative, we can, not, we can prove it uh, oh, so we can, yeah. uh, okay, you cannot fly it because it's so dangerous to go fly it in a flight. You cannot even do a bad scene like in the COVID. So uh, it's, it's clear that we have to, to have some balance between risk and between innovation. So it, it, there are things that we have to test, probably in a sandbox, probably in an in a, in a, in a, in a environment that we can have more control, but we need uh, that because it's a competitive advantage. So my, my point of view is the regulation will come for sure. But the thing that we are right now uh, discussing is how are you going to uh, position your, your country in, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of financial competitiveness. So I don't really think that any bank that is going to be uh, succeed or maintain in the future could really avoid crypto Space. in the same way they can avoid web. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's the point. I, for me, it's very, very clear, and I think all the data is that is really, really, really be very, very competitive to use crypto. Right now, there are more uh, USDC settlement in, in Circle than in Visa. So yeah, I, I, we, in, in all terms of data, we think that really probably payments, uh, the, the best way to do payments globally is crypto. It's, right now, it's the, the best case. Uh, it's really a market fit uh, case. Eneka, what is your point of view on that, on, on, on regulation and, and how financial institutions embrace crypto? So look, what we are seeing uh, with the, in the United States is uh, I mean, something that, uh, I mean, nobody could even believe in the, the, the worst nightmares. So, so it's like... A, Do I, you I think mean, that? <laughs> I mean, even... A lot of even, people saw it coming, <laughs> right? Like, even myself, that I, I don't... I, I mean, I, I understand and I, I talk to regulators and, and I understand that they don't understand it and they, they think that, I mean, all of bad things about crypto is like, uh, like shutting down uh, this company, uh, suing Coinbase, uh, so shutting down this bank. I mean, they they they, they went like like too far. So uh, Binance, okay, Binance, my, uh, maybe it's arguable that they did like shady things, whatever in the past, whatever. But Coinbase, you know, uh, Coinbase, they, that they they are they have been trying to do things properly for a long time, like asking the regulator, how can we do this? How can we do this? And Nobody was answering them, and what, what they have is they are, they are swing them. It's like, come on. So I'm very pessimistic with the United States. I'm more optimistic on, on in Europe, but the thing is that uh, at, at this point, I, I find that maybe Mika is like overrated. It's like Mika is the solution for everything in crypto, and it's like Mika. So DeFi is, is out is out of uh, Mika. Uh, I don't think that uh, today in Europe you can build actual innovation in DeFi without being like, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a bit risky uh, doing that in, in Europe. So I don't know, but it's a, it's a good point. Uh, Europe is taking uh, the right steps. And the UK, uh, I, I, I think that they, they are going to do the things properly because they need to to recover. They, they need to be, again, this financial um, this financial hub. Right? For you, Aida, what, 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 what do you think is going to happen with traditional institutions? You're building infrastructure and you're building APIs for yep. a day when these big banks want to offer these as part of their fintech stack. Yeah, so just to add on, on what Eneko was saying, um, I think the United States uh, no crypto, no their, uh, understands the advantages, disadvantages, but um, they have one thing that no other geography globally has, which is uh, capital formation happens in the United States. So if I want to take uh, Atani public, uh, I'm not thinking on listing Atani on the uh, Madrid uh, stock exchange. I'm thinking on Nasdaq, right? And that happens globally. And going back to what I was mentioning about uh, access to finance, the United States, I think they are trying to protect uh, that capital formation still happens in the United States, still happens in USD. And crypto is just uh, competing directly uh, against that, right? So I think the strategy they are following is uh, is a conscious strategy. They know why Defensive. what they are doing. That they know what they are killing. They they know. Uh, perhaps or is uh, I, I'm not going to say if I think uh, it's a good strategy or bad strategy. Time will tell. But I think uh, that's like their positioning, uh, which which is more dangerous because if it's just they, they it's an, a big unknown, uh, they will learn, right? But they know what it is, and they are fighting it yeah. because they see it as a, as a competition on capital right. formation. Uh, it's not about uh, money laundering, and uh, money laundering happens in traditional banks. Uh, that's, that's where the money is. Um, and going back on, on your question, um, I think all financial institutions are going to offer uh, crypto, and crypto can be a uh, Bitcoin, but it can also be a uh, liquidity, uh, a tokenized real estate, right? Um, like uh, BCG, uh, in, in like a month ago, they published this report, and they said blockchain could bring, uh, could unlock uh, $68 trillion by 2030 of illiquid assets. And that's amazing for the financial sector. Just get like uh, large markets, real estate, private equity. The biggest issue is, uh, is that it's liquid. not liquid, right? Bring that to the uh, blockchain, and you have unlocked almost $70 trillion. That's, that's amazing. That's happening. Um, it's just, I think, regulation has to be there. Uh, Mika is not perfect, nothing is perfect, but 
uh, if there is a regulatory framework that big companies can comply with, uh, that brings confidence to the ecosystem, and that's a huge leap, right? That's, that's in my opinion, uh, I started in crypto back in 2013, and this is just amazing. This is what we need for, for massive adoption. Absolutely. Um, so we talk on two important things that everybody talks when, when you discuss the token economy, right? We talk about volatility, we talk about regulation. I think the, the third thing that gets people confused or spooked about this uh, new economy and these new asset classes is uh, this idea of multiple chains, right? Tokens run in chain A or chain B, all these layer ones, all this complexity in the system, right? Um, when you think about traditional capital markets, right? I go into my broker and I want to buy any stock. It doesn't matter if it's in the US, if it trades in Japan, there is an ADR. Like, it is simple. It is, I can buy bonds, I can buy you know, equities, I can buy ETFs, it doesn't matter. When you try to do this in crypto, it's just like you, you almost need a PhD in order to understand <laughs> it. I, like, I, I, I always tell people, uh, technologies get to the real inflection point in adoption when my mom can understand it and can use it, right? Mm. And today, unfortunately, a lot of these things are not easy for people like my mom or some of your, your parents, right? Uh, so we have this issue or, of multi-chains and interoperability. Of that. How do you think that is going to evolve? Is, 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 this, is it all this going to converge? Are we going to have some of those chains that are just going to die and disappear? Or, or the world is more of a, of, a, of, of a world where these things are going to interoperate and there's going to be some kind of a middleware that connects everything. So like that, can you give us your view on that? Yeah. Uh, so. Actually, we started at Honey just to solve that issue. So I used to do like uh, trading in traditional market stocks, Forex, and so on. And I used uh, interactive brokers, the Giro. And that's an amazing experience. You just log in, you can access any capital markets, right? But when you go to crypto, this that doesn't exist. Everything is so fragmented. You've got CFI, you've got DeFi, you've got NFTs, uh, lending, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this does not make sense. And even moving like to DeFi, uh, that's an, a, a world right there. So in, in Atani, actually, what we've done is uh, we've built a broker that what we do is, OK, you just need one account. And what we're doing is we have aggregated all the cryptocurrencies and liquidity of centralized exchanges and the same for DeFi, right? So what does this mean? If you want to buy a new coin, which is listed in uh, Arbitrum, um, a a user shouldn't even know what Arbitrum is, right? Uh, they should not have to have their own wallet and a seed and do a bridge and what's this and lose their money and so on. So it's like, okay, let's say you've got your USDT uh, and you will be able to buy like the newest token that is listed in Optimism. So in one click and Atani, what it's doing actually is doing all the bridges, all, uh, everything that is in the back end. Um, and I think this is how crypto Web3 is going to scale. Um, there are going to be more and more and more chains. This is just the beginning, right? Because each chain uh, makes sense for something, it, depending if you are looking for security, for speed, for many reasons, right? Um, but there has to be companies such as Satani. What, that, what they do is actually streamline the backend and make this uh, invisible for the user. And the user, just with one click, they have to have access to absolutely everything. everything. Jesus, is that the same view? Yes, I think I, Atani is, for, is doing a very good work in usability experience. That for sure is a pain. The, the thing is, if you want to, first of all, if you want to invest in the new Facebook, you are not going to find it in Nasdaq. So that, that for sure. Uh, if you want to invest in one of the biggest uh, uh, technology companies that is Ethereum, it's, it's not in the Nasdaq. So we are for sure, we have the new Nasdaq is not there. It's not there. So when you deploy, so this kind of uh, change is like a new deployment infrastructure. It's the new Amazon Web Services. So when you build a new Facebook or you build you know, a, a financial application, what are your, your uh, needs? You need a lot of security, you need a lot of transactions. What kind of um, deployment, what you change do you need? So that, that's why there are some kind of uh, chains that probably are optimized for different things. But the thing is, you are not going to, the next 
technology companies are not going to stay in NACAS for sure, are going to stay deployed in this kind of this chains that are optimized depends on the use case. And that's, that's why they are out of uh, for sure, uh, connectivity problems that Atani and other kind of projects are solving. But for sure, they, 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 I think that's the way uh, the, the new tech companies are going to, to be to, to, to launch. So, so if we believe that, and, and we draw that comparison with, let's say, cloud, cloud storage or cloud services, right? At the end today, there are three providers of cloud services, right? It is Google, it is Amazon, and it's Microsoft. So from your point of view, Neko, do, do you think that we're going to get to that point? Like, we're going to have, maybe they don't exist yet. Maybe it's not Ethereum, maybe it's not BTC, maybe it's not Polygon, maybe it's not Avalanche or Arbitrum. Are we going to get to a point, maybe 5, 10, 20 years down the road, where there's going to be three, four that are really going to have, I don't know, 80% market share? So the thing is that we are in the, in the, in the very beginning of, of, of this world, and it's like uh, innovation constantly, uh, so the smartest or brightest minds in the world working on this, and, and, and this is very good for us that are building, building stuff, because there are... Uh, there is a lot of innovation. So now there is this, uh, so everybody is building on Polkadot because this and this and then is uh, Polygon and then is Cosmos. is a lot of innovation. And at the end of the day is what we need because uh, we, we have better infrastructure to, to build things. And at the end of the day... But it's inefficient when you have so many things, right? Yeah, but this is, my, uh, this is the beginning and the, the big players are going to be like... Uh, like in, in the next few months or years, so, so we will we'll, we'll see who, yeah. who are the, the biggest players, the, 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 the three main players. So there is uh, some, something in, in that's way, going on. We have to compare inefficiency. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if the really payments are more efficient in a traditional market or, or in this kind of... If you want to send some one dollar to or one cent to a people in Nigeria, I really think that the traditional is more efficient than uh, this. I think in terms of efficiency, is no, no doubt that it's more efficient than the new infrastructure. Right. So um, just to close, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, if you have to make a prediction in terms of when the recover recovery of the token market is going to happen, and, and thinking about you know, the macroeconomic, thinking about interest rates, thinking about what happens with, with the equity capital markets. Um, what would that prediction be? Uh, when, when are we going to see that change in trajectory for, for tokens and for crypto again? And i probably do it in order to start with you. So um, the, 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 the public and the press, they, they only see the price, the price of, the, of Bitcoin. And meanwhile, we, we know that uh, a lot of things are happening, like more, more usage, more wallets, more people working on this. On this. So, so the, we, we can see the growth, but the people only see the price that is like this. No? So but is it going to be end of 24, end of 25, 27? So wishful thinking, like uh, in this uh, ending, I mean, by the end of this year, we, we should end this like a uh, kind of bear market. Let, let, let's try to, to understand the big picture. So uh, crypto asset has been the, the most, the best asset class in the last decade. And it's been the, the best asset class in this decade. And it's been even the best uh, asset in that year. So yes, it is out of volatility. We have been, uh, our, our strategy from 2017 has, has really been the best strategy if we compare with the funds. So really, yes, we are right now in a, in, a very, in, a, in a sector that is really growing a lot and they have a lot of expectation that sometimes go too high. But for me, it's sure that the, the, the next uh, so the best manager or the best uh, fund manager in the future will be a crypto asset manager. So I think this market are going to be to the 10 trillion, I don't know, but, but because there are a lot of the companies the new uh, generation of Facebook, Google, Amazon, wherever, are going to be crypto companies and that are going to be in the asset market, so in the crypto market. So that's why I think, uh, yeah, we will have volatility, but for me it's sure that the, the, the next big or the next most successful fund manager will be a crypto uh, fund manager. Okay, are there? Um, I think crypto markets doesn't matter. I think tech companies doesn't matter. Anything matters, just what the uh, Fed is doing with interest rates, and that's where I think everyone is looking at, right? So uh, once we see there is consensus about the Fed 
um, stop, uh, yeah, stop increasing and start even decreasing. That would be just amazing. But even uh, pausing, and when there is consensus that that's going to happen because core inflation is um, still it's, high. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's still. Uh, that's when there's going to be a, a shift, a big shift. And in my opinion, the crypto market is the the one that is going to move faster. Why? Because that's that's always what happens in crypto. It moves faster up and down, right? That's uh, crypto volatility. Um, in my opinion, I would be expecting uh, 2024. Hopefully, first semester. Uh, don't know. Um, hopefully, the Fed, uh, yeah, uh, stops increasing interest rates and and. Uh, yeah, I think, and there are some interesting, you know, tailwinds for that new election in the U.S. happening next year. Yeah. That definitely will create incentives. Absolutely. For politicians and and the system to actually go that way. Excellent. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. It's great to be here to kickstart South Summit. Thank you for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.